Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Can we put the first slide up? Uh, there we go. As you know, tonight we are beginning our Rosh Hashanah service, the Feast of Trumpets. For how many people here is it your very first time to attend a... Wow, let's give them a big hand. Yay! Now, I've already met several, but how many of you came from out of state or out of country? All right. Yay. I've talked to some who flew in today and they fly out tomorrow all the way from Texas. I mean, we have people from all over. We have people from Chile who are here even. And uh, we are so grateful for everyone that's here. Now, how many of you have heard of the Yom Kippur War? Okay. They're calling this the Rosh Hashanah War. When Iran attacked Israel the other day, but yesterday was Rosh Hashanah for Israel. And I think it's interesting. I saw a video of a bunch of Israeli soldiers blowing the shofar before they went into Lebanon. And a whole IDF unit, they were all praying, and I thought this was phenomenal. Uh, the most important thing we need to realize, those that are familiar with this ministry, it's not January 1st, but it's today, so wish people Happy New Year! Yay! <clears throat> this is the year 5785. I'd like everyone to stand up for just a second. I have so much to tell you about this, but let me start here. This is the very day Yeshua will be crowned King of Kings and Lord of Lords. How many of you want to be at the coronation of the King? We need to understand what we're doing tonight is the dress rehearsal for that. And right now, they are doing it in heaven. They're doing a dress rehearsal in heaven for the coming of the Messiah. Someday, Rosh Hashanah, actually, some year, while, while we are worshiping and praising the king, and they're doing it in heaven, we are going to join the heavenly choir. So what I want to do, I want all of us right now to make this proclamation together. The Lord, He is God. 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 Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap offering. The way you say Happy New Year in Hebrew is Lashana Tova. Turn to someone and say Lashana Tova. You can also say Chag Sameach, which means Happy Holidays. Okay, you can be seated. In case you don't know, if you remember, it's always evening and morning, day one. So the day actually starts right now as the sun is setting. And in case you didn't know, all of you know man was created on the sixth day of the week. Well, Rosh Hashanah is the sixth day of the week, the very day that Adam was created. Now, I want to go through some slides here for you before we uh, enter into prayer and worship. How many of you know in Ecclesiastes 3.1, it says, To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. Okay. There's two things I want to point out. I don't know if you realize what that means. There is a season and a time to every purpose. That means you, God, created you on purpose. It was your time and God created you. Now, how many of you know we're supposed to know the times and seasons? Some of you know that? Okay. So what time is it? What, what season is it? 
with, with so many Christians, they all believe they are to know the time and the seasons, but ask them what time it is. Well, I don't know. What season is it? I don't know. So one of the things I want to point out, as you also know, as Ecclesiastes goes on, it says there's a time for war and a time for peace. What time is it? Exactly. It goes on to say there's a time to dance, born, die, plant, pluck. The problem is, if we don't know the times and seasons, we'll be planting at plucking time and plucking at planting time. This is why we have to know what time it is. Right now, as of now, we've begun the year 5785, which means it's been 5,785 years since Adam was created. Now, I want you to understand what that really means. Do you turn five at the, be at the end of the fourth year or at the end of the fifth year? Okay, so you don't become five until you've completed the fifth year, even though on day one after the birthday, you're actually in your fifth year, but you're four and a quarter, four and a half. Are you following me? So I want you to understand one thing concerning what time it is. If this is the year 5,785, how many years have already gone by? Five, well, 5,000. So if we're 785, that means we're 785 years into the sixth day. Which means it's about 80% over. Are you following me? 80% over, think of 8 o'clock. It is sunset. We are entering the seventh day now. It's evening and morning, so we are entering around 7 p.m., 8 p.m. on the sixth day. We're about to enter the seventh day, which is sunset. So the seventh day is beginning now. The key to understand everything is to be on the biblical calendar. Our Gregorian calendar is based only on the sun. The Islamic calendar is based only on the moon. But in Genesis 1.14, God said, let both of them determine everything. And so if we're not on his calendar, we're going to miss the boat. How many of you would like to be a day late with Noah's Ark? <laughs> okay, the festivals are called the Moedim. We have the weekly Shabbat, the monthly new moons, and then the yearly festivals. So the yearly festivals, as I said, are known as the Moedim. We also have the Shemitah cycle every seventh year the Jubilee cycle every 50th year. And we, how many of you believe the Lord's the same yesterday, today, and forever? Amen. Do you know it here or here? Okay, look at this. The first time he came was during the spring feast, Nisan through Savan. If he fulfilled the spring feast to the day of his first coming, he'll fulfill the fall feast to the day of his second coming. And the second coming is in the month of Tishri. This is, we don't know what year, but this is when it's going to happen. Now, I want to explain one thing. Knowing it's a time for war, this is why I wrote the book America at War. And I want you to notice what's in yellow. I wrote this book a year ago, and it says this vision of the end of days was a great warfare happening between Iran and Israel during the month of Nisan. This is from Daniel chapter 10. And so I have here, it will be fulfilled some year in the same month. Now look at this. This April of 2024 could be the start of the prophetic war with Iran. April 8th of this last year is exactly when the prophetic war with Iran began. And then I put down here that this time of our election, I believe there's going to be so much chaos in America that 2024 would be the ideal year for China to attack Taiwan, North Korea to attack South Korea, Iran and Lebanon to attack Israel, and we could even have a possible attack by a foreign nation on us. And then I saw today in the news, China celebrating 75 years of communism and is calling for the reunification with Taiwan, and they say it's just a matter of justice. And then I read today, South Korea is warning North Korea nuclear weapons won't 
keep it safe. Now, this is interesting. Uh, how many of you know Iran does not like Israel? They created a special anti-Mossad unit to fight Mossad when they would ever try to infiltrate. What he didn't know, the Iranians, the head of it was a Mossad agent. And not only that, 20 people of the group were also Israeli Mossad agents. Iran's entire, <laughs> let's go after Mossad, was ran by Mossad. Let's give the Lord a clap offering for that one. <laughs> to understand the Shemitah cycle, the yellow is a seven-year time period. The blue is a seven-year time period. And as you go down, you will see there are seven sevens. And going down on the right, you'll see what year it is in the Jubilee cycle. There are 49 years in a Jubilee cycle. And I want to show you what time it is by pointing out where we are right now. We are just now beginning the year 5785, which is 2024 Rosh Hashanah to 2025 Rosh Hashanah. No one can tell you 1973 was a Jubilee year because... What part of it? The first part of 73 or the last part of 73? And so don't let anyone try to tell you that they know in the Gregorian year that it was a year of Jubilee. That's impossible because it's based on Rosh Hashanah. Now, what you need to understand after you go through this, look at the top left. The year of Jubilee is always the first year of the next Shemitah cycle. It's not a separate year. Okay, that's very important. So watch this. Here's 5785. Now we know before that came 82, 83, 84. How do we know whether a year is a Shemitah year, which means the seventh year? How do we know when a Jubilee year? It's called math. I mean, so many Christians have such a hard time trying to figure out when the Jubilee year is. Watch this. 5782 is divisible by seven. Therefore, it's a Shemitah year. It's divisible by 49. Okay, that means the next year is a jubilee year. And that's why 5783 was a jubilee year, which is also the first year of the next Shemitah cycle. 5784 is the second year. And right now we are entering the third year of a Shemitah cycle. So today is like happy birthday to creation or happy birthday to the world. But what we need to realize, Adam was created today. This is the very day. This is happy birthday to mankind. And this is the day God was crowned as king. Because the animals, the beasts can't crown God as king, only man can. Therefore, this is the very day God was crowned king. And this is the very day Yeshua will be crowned king as well. So Adam in Hebrew means mankind. Now, why do we have the round hala up here? It's because it's in the shape of a crown. Uh, Jomi made this. He did a real good job. Now, here's something else. Yay. Here I have the Red Sea. Everyone's crossing the Red Sea. That happened in the month of Nisan. So Tishri 1 was the birthday of humanity. The month of Nisan is happy birthday to Israel. As a matter of fact, every Israeli king was crowned in Nisan. As a matter of fact, here we see... All right. So what I wanted to point out... Look what Pilate said. He said, behold the man, behold your king. He doesn't know Zechariah, but every one of the Pharisees knew this term. And so they were freaking out over all of this. Well, one thing that we see, it was on Passover when all of Israeli kings were crowned, that Yeshua is crowned with a crown of thorns, where it says, cursed is the ground because of you. 
In pain you'll eat of it all the days of your life. And then it says thorns and thistles it will bring forth for you. Yeshua wore the crown of thorns to reverse the curse that has been happening. And very shortly on this day, he will be crowned King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen. Okay, with that, let's uh, pray. Uh, Karen is going to come up and we're going to have a signer with her to sign. And we're going to say some prayers here in Hebrew and then in English. Come on around. All right, everyone except Lori can stand. <laughs> Let's stand while we say these prayers. They're going to say it in uh, Hebrew, and then we'll say it in English. Oh, I light the kettles. Ta-da! <laughs> There's the mic. Okay. Amen. Together, blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and has inspired us to light the candle of the Shabbat and the day of remembrance. Together, Shehekianu, Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech Haolam, Shehekianu, Vakiyamanu, Vahigianu, Lazman Hazeh. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has supported us, protected us, and brought us to this season. Now this is from the Amidah, which is known as the standing prayer for the Messianic King. Together, speedily cause the offspring of your servant David to flourish, and let him be exalted by your saving power, for we wait all day long for your salvation. Blessed are you, O Lord, who causes salvation to flourish. And now for the greatest commandment together. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kevod Mahuto Leolam Vayed. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Praise be the name of your glorious sovereignty forever and ever, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And these words which I command you this day shall be upon your heart, and you shall teach them thoroughly to your children, and you shall speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk on the road, when you lie down, and when you rise. You shall bind them for a sign upon your hand, and they shall be for a reminder between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and upon your gates. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, ladies. And Curtis, I'd like for you to come up here for just a moment. I'm going to go over. There are three different specific blasts that the shofar makes that we'll be doing 100 times tonight as we close. The first one is the Tekiah, and with this blast, all the people of Israel were to be gathered together to hear what Moses had to say. And here's what the Tekiah sounds like. <laughs> Thank you. 
Then there was the Shevarim, which is when they were to break camp, pack up their tents, and get ready to go. And it was three blasts. Then there is the Teruah, which this day is known as Yom Teruah, which means to wake up, it's time for war. Thank you, Curtis. Let's give him a big hand. Okay, the worship team can come on up. And as the worship team is getting ready to come up, I want to go over something else with you. We find in the book of Numbers about two silver trumpets that they were to make and they had to be of beaten work. So right now I want you to remember these, I have silver trumpets up here, but realize in heaven they are also celebrating this feast. One of the things I want to talk about is Teruwa means to wake up. Some of us need an alarm clock and some of us need a bucket of water. <laughs> What's important to remember is while the alarm clock wakes the body, Yom Teruwa and the sound of the shofar wakes our soul. In Psalm 81.3, it says to blow the shofar at the new moon. There was a new moon, as we know, every month, and they were to blow the shofar. But today is a special new moon, tonight, because it is the Feast of Trumpets. It goes on to say, I'll start over, blow the shofar at the new moon, in the time appointed on our solemn feast day. Now, what is the purpose of the shofar? We find that it is to gather everyone together. And listen to Matthew 24, 31. Some year, I'm hearing an echo. Okay, sorry. Okay, it says in Matthew 24, 31, he will send his angels with the great sound of a shofar and they will gather together his elect from the four winds. Do you realize this is referring to Yom Teruah? When you understand it means to gather, and this is what it's talking about, we know the gathering together is going to take place some year on this day, and the king is coming, and he will be coronated as king. Well, as a matter of fact, in 1 Kings chapter 1, verse 39 and 40, at the coronation of Solomon, Zadok the priest took a horn of oil and anointed him, and then they blew the shofar, and everyone shouted out, God save the king. Now, what's important about Yom Teruah is knowing that Yom Teruah, time is up. It's up. It's all over. And we need to understand that life is a timed test. All of our days are numbered. As a matter of fact, in the book of Job, it says, seeing man's days are already determined, the number of his months are with you. You have appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. Just like the oceans can't pass over into the land, God has predetermined every one of our days how long we are going to be around. As a matter of fact, 
Time is so precious, it is irretrievable. Think about it. Time is irretrievable. Listen to Psalm 37, 18. The days of the upright are numbered by the Lord. So here's what I want you to realize. This is a very important principle. How many of you would like to have a change in your life? You will never change your life until you change something you do every day. Doing the same thing over and over is a, and having wrong results is the definition of crazy. If you want to change your life, you have to do something different every day. The secret to success is found in your daily routine. As a matter of fact, some people think you can put time in a bottle, but you can't. What we have to realize, the big question is, are you ready? Right now, are you ready? This is Yom Teruah. This is when the gathering together of the elect could happen tonight, tomorrow. Now, here's something that you need to understand. And I'm going to start with Matthew chapter 20, verse 11 and 12. It says, when they had received the money, this is the parable of these people that some worked an hour, some worked all day, but they all got the same amount of money. And it says that they were murmuring against the good man of the house, saying these last have only worked one hour, but you've made them equal to us, which have borne the burden and the heat of the day. Who is the good man of the house? God, Yeshua. But now look at Matthew 25, 14 and 15. It says, for the kingdom of heaven is as a man who was traveling into a far country, just like Yeshua going from earth to heaven. He called his own servants and he delivered unto them his goods or funds. And unto everyone he gave five talents to one, to another he gave two, to another he gave one. Every man according to their ability. And then he took his journey. Who is the one who's traveling on a long journey? Now, did you know Satan knows God's calendar better than most believers? Let me give you an example. Most people don't think of the book of Proverbs as being a prophecy. But it is very prophetic. Think about what we just read. In Proverbs 7, 19 and 20, the harlot tells the stupid man, the good man is not at home. He's gone on a long journey. He's taken a bag of money with him, and he will come home when? Do you see how this is speaking of this time? Okay, now look at the different translations of the Bible. One of them says he will come back at the day appointed. Another one says he will come back at the full moon. And another version says he'll come back at the new moon. Which one is it? Well, here's what's important. God had the festivals based on the sun and the moon, which is why Passover and Sukkot are at a full moon. The Feast of Trumpets is at the new moon. Well, we know he left at Passover. And he's going to be returning on trumpets. Here's another proof. Look what the next verse says. Here is 20. It says he has taken a bag of money with him. He will come home at the day appointed. We have to look at the Hebrew. And it is the new moon or Rosh Hashanah. Now watch this. You have Kiseh, which means a throne. And God is... On the throne on Rosh Hashanah, and the word in Hebrew, Keseh, is the new moon. The very word throne and the new moon is basically the same word in Hebrew, and it is the day he will be crowned King of Kings and Lord of Lords some year on this day at the new moon. That is the day that is appointed. Now listen to this. This is from Psalms 89, verse 35 through 37. When God swears, you know what's going to happen. 
And it says, once and for all, I have sworn by my holiness, I will not lie to David. His offspring, Israel, will endure forever. His throne, as long as the sun before me, like the moon, it will be established forever, a faithful witness in the sky. So God is telling us that as long as there's a moon and a sun, Israel will never go away. And then in Psalm 104, 19 through 22, he says that he made the moon to mark the appointed times. It says seasons in an inaccurate translation. And it says here, the sun knows its time for setting. You make darkness and it is night when all the beasts of the forest creep about. The young lions roar for their prey, seeking their food from God. And when the sun rises, they steal away and lie down in their dens. I want to make another point that's not on my notes. I just wanted to let you know. How many of you know, since God created the animals... He is responsible to feed them. Think about that. When we pray the Our Father who art in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. Since God created mankind, he also is responsible to make sure his people get fed. When you're praying that in Hebrew, it's a matter of saying, God, give us this day our daily bread. It's the daily bread that you have promised to give us. Now I want to mention here, uh, in Isaiah, let's start with Isaiah 66, verse 22 and 23. God says, as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make. Now, how many of you know that hasn't happened yet? Shall remain before me, says the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. He's talking to Israel. But watch this. It says, even when the new heavens come, the new moon. He says here that it will happen that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another, all flesh will come and worship before me, says the Lord. Even the new heavens and the new earth will be keeping the new moons, will be keeping the Sabbath. But now in this picture, we have the Feast of Trumpets happening in the book of Nehemiah. And it says all people gathered themselves together into the street before the water gate. And they spoke unto Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law. Now I have over in the corner, this is an actual Torah scroll uh, from Germany that survived the Holocaust. It's actually over a, a hundred years old. And if anyone would like to come and see it when we're over, you can come up and uh, take a look at that. But it says, which the Lord commanded to Israel, and it says, Ezra the priest brought the law before the congregation of men and women that all could hear with understanding on the first day of the seventh month. This is not only the very anniversary of the creation of Adam, this is the very anniversary of this event. And look at this in 8.3 of Nehemiah, he says he read before the broad place that was before the water gate from early morning till midday. That was a long service. And then it says, it was in the presence of the men, the women, and all those who could understand, and the ears of all the people were attentive to the scroll of the Torah. And then in verse 5, he opened up the book in the sight of everyone, and when he opened it, everyone stood up. And then in verse 6 through 8, Ezra blessed the Lord, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, with the lifting of their hands. Now we see in Leviticus 23, 23 and 24, the Lord tells Moses, Tell Israel, in the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you're to have a Sabbath, a memorial of the blowing of trumpets, a holy assembly. That's today is exactly what he is talking about. But what was it a memorial of? Today is also the very day Abraham was going to offer up Isaac. I want you to really begin to soak in what today is all about biblically. Unless you know it, you don't connect the dots. 
Now listen to Joel 2, 1 and 2. And what was offered instead of Isaac? A ram with shofars, two of them. <laughs> now look at Joel 2, 1 and 2. Blow the shofar in Zion, sound an alarm. Do you know what the Hebrew word for alarm is? Teruah. In my holy mountain, let the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord comes. This tells you the tribulation will begin some year on this day. The tribulation cannot start any day. It cannot start any month. It cannot even start any year. As a matter of fact, how many of you know Daniel was Jewish? <laughs> Y'all know Daniel was Jewish, right? He did not have a Gregorian calendar. He had the biblical calendar. How many of you ever heard of the 70 weeks of Daniel? Those are 70 Shemitah weeks. And how many weeks are left? And guess what that means? The, tribu ha the tribulation has to begin the beginning of a Shemitah cycle. Oh, well, what year is this? 5785. When does the next Shemitah cycle begin? How do we know? You don't have to worry about the tribulation beginning until you know when the next Shemitah cycle begins. And if it doesn't happen then, it can't happen for seven more years. This is why you want to understand the biblical calendar. Listen to Zephaniah 1, 14 through 16. The great day of the Lord is near. It is near and it's hurrying greatly. The voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty man will cry bitterly. That day is a day of wrath, distress, anguish, trouble, ruin, a day of darkness and gloom, clouds and blackness. And guess what? It's a day of the shofar and teruah. And today is known as Yom Teruah. When you understand the calendar, the Bible comes to life because you know the days these things will occur. Now, I don't know the dates, but we're supposed to know the times and seasons. Okay, with that said, this is what's going to happen on this day some year, but you have to understand, like there's seven trumpets in Revelation, those could be seven consecutive years on the Feast of Trumpets that each trumpet is blown. So not all of these things will happen the same year, but they will all happen on this day to begin with. Look at this verse right here. It says, alas, that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. That's in Jeremiah 30. It is known as the time of Jacob's trouble. It is also known as the day of the awakening blast. Teruah is the alarm clock to wake the dead. The resurrection of the dead will happen on this day some year. If you know the times and seasons. We don't know the date. We don't know what year. But I'm telling you, it'll happen on this day. It's also known as Yom Hadin, which is the day of judgment. This is when God determines who will live and who will die for the following year. Who becomes poor? Who becomes rich? Who will fall? Who will rise? For the next 10 days from now to Yom Kippur, God looks at all humanity like troops in review and he decides who will live and who will die the next year. Also, it is known as the opening of the books. This is the very day when God looks at your life, your work, your family, your friends, your, how you spent your free time, your speech, your thoughts, and the books are opened. And God is reviewing your life. It's also known as the opening of the gates. It's also known as Yom HaKaseh, which means the hidden day. And it's two days long, so no one knows the day or the hour when it will begin. It's also known as the day of the wedding of the Messiah. How many of you want to be at the wedding of the Messiah? I don't have this verse in here, but you know there are some believers that will not make the wedding of the Messiah. As a matter of fact, it's uh, in uh, the Gospel of Luke. God says, for those who didn't open when he knocked, 
They get to go to the wedding supper. Okay, they don't get to go to the wedding. That's Luke 12, 32 through 34. Well, then the coronation of the king. I think all of us want to be at the coronation of the king. And so here's something I want you just, you can either close your eyes, keep your eyes open. But I want you to listen to this verse, and then I'm going to show you the next slide. But I, I want you for just a minute, I want you to soak this in, realize how important today is, what event is going to happen on this day, and listen to Daniel chapter 7, verse 9 and 10. Daniel has a vision, and he says, I beheld till all the thrones were cast down, and the ancient of days did sit whose garment was white as snow, the hair of his head like pure wool, and his throne was a fiery flame. His wheels as burning fire, a fiery stream issued and came forth before him. Thousand thousands ministered to him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set and the books were opened. What day is that? That's Yom Teruah. When you understand and you see the patterns, he is telling you this event will happen some year at this time. Listen to the book of Revelation. It quotes this in chapter 5, 11 through 13. John says, I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels around about the throne and the beasts and the elders and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And then it says, and every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that are in them, all the creatures were crying out, blessing and honor and glory and power to him that sits onto the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Revelation 7 9. After this, I beheld in the great multitude, which no one can number, of all nations, all kindreds, all people, all tongues, were standing before the throne and before the Lamb. But here it's a fiery flame. And the books are opened. And now we see the Messiah coming on the clouds. This is Daniel 7. 13 and 14, it says, I saw the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven, came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him, and there was given him dominion and glory in the kingdom that all people, nations, languages would serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion and won't pass away, and his kingdom will never be destroyed. Let's have the worship team come up. And I'm going to read Revelation chapter 1, verse 7. It says, Behold, he's coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him. Even they which pierced him and all the kindreds of the earth will wail because of him. Even so, amen. And amen. We're going to have a time of worship, so let's stand. I've got, we're going to have Curtis Bailey come up here. And he's going to blow the shofar 100 times. And it's going to be in the order of how I talked about. There's a specific order. Now, how many have ever heard in Thessalonians about at the last trump? That refers to the 100th blast on Rosh Hashanah. Again, when you know the times and seasons, that is telling you the resurrection of the dead will take place on Rosh Hashanah at the last trump. Now, I don't know if that's the last trump in Israel or the last trump in New Zealand or something. But before, go ahead and have a seat. It'll be just a minute. I'm going to have him come in just a minute, but I have a few more things I want to go over with you. It won't take long. Water. Water. <laughs> 
<clears throat> All right, remember Genesis 114, God created the sun and the moon for what? Signs. It doesn't say light. It doesn't say heat. It says that later. The number one reason God created eclipses or the sun and the moon was for signs. That refers to an eclipse. The nice thing about those, no false prophet can manipulate an eclipse. And an eclipse speaks to every tribe, nation, and tongue. And he said he created them for his calendar. The Gregorian calendar has nothing to do with the moon, even though they call it a month, which means moon. And the Islamic calendar has nothing to do with the sun, which is why Ramadan can be in July or December. It moves. Now, I want to point out some signs in the heavens that are coming. But before I do that, let me tell you how it's significant the signs are. You can only proclaim the year of Jubilee on what day? Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. You can only proclaim the year of Jubilee on Yom Kippur. 1973 began the year of Jubilee on Yom Kippur, and the very first day was the Yom Kippur War. 73 and 50 is 2023, and the Iron Swords War, October 8th of last year, was the very last day of the year of Jubilee. So here the year of Jubilee, 50 years apart, were both bookended by wars. Preceding that in 67, which was the Six Day War, there were four total lunar eclipses in 67, defining these as war with Israel because the sun speaks of the nation, the moon speaks of Israel, and these four total lunar eclipses not only told us about the 67 war, it warned us seven years later for the first day of the Yom Kippur War. Then there were four total lunar eclipses in 2014, 2015 was exactly seven years warning of the October 8th war. Now, we all remember we just had the April 8th total solar eclipse going from south to north through the United States. That literally happened on Nissan 1. Nissan 1 was the exact day of the three days of darkness beginning in the original plagues. Nissan 1 was the day Moses' tabernacle was set up. Nisan 1 was the day God's glory fell, and Nisan 1 is the beginning day of the religious calendar. Last month, we had uh, September 18th of 2024 was a lunar eclipse, which fell on Elul 15. Like I said, you can only have a solar eclipse on a new moon. You can only have a lunar eclipse on a full moon. And so here, this is the days of repentance the month of repentance is that lull, and God wants Israel to repent. Every lunar eclipse are always followed by a solar eclipse two weeks later. October 2nd of 2024, just the other day, beginning Rosh Hashanah in Israel, another solar eclipse on Rosh Hashanah, the beginning of the civil year. Next spring, March 14th, there is a total lunar eclipse on Purim. That's Haman who wanted to kill all the Jews. This completely repeats two years in a row. March 29th is Nisan 1 for a solar eclipse. And then September 7th is the middle of Elul. September 21st is Tishri 1 again. And March 3rd is another lunar eclipse on Purim. And so we have to see, this is why I wrote the book, America at War, because not only are these occurring on these dates, you go to Numbers 10, the tribe that is assigned to each one is exactly the tribe, the tribal order of how they march to war to take the promised land. Now, Yom Kippur is the next big event, and I want everyone to know that Friday night, September 11th, we're going to have a Yom Kippur service at our offices, but we're going to have two services because we only get so many people in our TV studio. It'll be from 5 to 
and then another one from 7 to 8.30. And that's when everyone comes in white. But at Yom Kippur, Friday night, September 11th, we'll have two services. Oh. Uh, yeah, I know, that's the wrong date. Okay, and then, uh, and that's the wrong date. It's October. These are all October. Um, October, we're going to have two services for Sukkot at our offices as well. So I just want to make sure everyone doesn't miss it and I'm not living in the past. <laughs> yeah, it's supposed to be October. Okay, now coming up, October 7th, which is this next Monday at 7 p.m., we're having Lori Cardoza Moore talking about how we need to get the American children back from the woke school system. And so we're going to be uh, having a like a town hall meeting at our offices. And that will be this Monday, October 7th at 7 p.m. Now, one other thing I just want to cover real quickly before Curtis is blowing the shofar. How many of you know that the Lord is the word? The word was made flesh. How many of you like GMO food? Well, guess what? The Word of God is compared to food, and it's been genetically, genetically modified by man. A lot of us have been eating GMO food in our Bible. That may come as a shock, but I believe this year God is going to cleanse His Word. Did you know there are over 900 different English translations? They're all copyrighted. So they're all different. Which one is the correct one? If you have 900, I want to give you a quick example. This is Matthew 13, 52. In some of the 900 different translations. Here, it's all the same verse, but notice the first one is, then said he. The other one is, and he said. And the other one is, he said to them. It's all the same verse, but they move things around. One says, who is instructed? One has made a disciple. The other one is, who's become a disciple? And it, this bottom one, it even says, new and fresh, and things that are old and familiar. Here's some more translations, English, of the same verse. Then he said to them, it says every scribe, but the next translation is teacher of the law. The next one is legal expert. The next one's tour teacher. The next one's student. These are all different English translations of this same verse. Here we see a whole lot more. I'm, these are A through Z. We're now on the D's and E's. But look at this bottom one. It says, then Jesus said to them, every teacher of the law or scribe who's been taught about or become a disciple of the kingdom of heaven is like the owner, the head of a house. He brings out both new things and old things he has saved from his treasure storeroom. Knowledge of the Old Testament provides insight into Jesus' new message of the kingdom of God. There was no Old Testament back then. There was only the one. Look at Matthew 13, 52, again, in different translations. Notice in red, one of them says householder, one says homeowner, one says landowner, one says owner of a house, one says master of a household. Oh, it goes on. Here are more. Look at the very bottom one. Then he added, these experts in Jewish law who are now my disciples have double treasures from the Old Testament as well as from the New. There was no New Testament then. They didn't even think of the Old Testament as old. That's what they were using. Here's more Matthew 15 too. Look at this one. He said then, you see, from how every student well-trained in God's kingdom is like the owner of a general store. <laughs> who can put his hands on anything you need, old or new, exactly when you need it. Here's more. Matthew 13, 52. All of these are different translations, and look at the one I have underlined. He said to them, every teacher of the law who has become a follower of the holy nation of heaven. Uh, here's more. All of these are more English translations. Look at this one. This is from a, the, a, Jew, a Jewish type 
Bible, it says, So Rebbe, Malak, Hamoshiach, said to them, Therefore, every sofer, scribe, Torah teacher, rabbi who becomes a Talmud, that's a student, a Talmud, of the Malkut Hashemayim, is like a man who is a Baal Bayat, who takes out his Otsar, Hadashot, new things, and also Yashanot, old things. <laughs> oh, but there's more English translations. Okay? These are just 62 of over 900 different English translations. This is why Danny Ben-Gigi, a doctor of theology, a true Hebrew scholar who was native Israeli, just like we have English teachers who teach us English, he's the Hebrew teacher to all of the Hebrews. He taught at Arizona University Hebrew. And... He and I together have put together the New Testament with better translations. And I've had people tell me, we are changing the Bible. My question is, if that's the case, which one? <laughs> There's over 900 of them. Okay. Now, I want to show you real quickly. I don't know how many of you ever heard of Franz Delich, but he decided to write the New Testament, put it in Hebrew. That's his name. He lives in 1885 is when he put the New Testament into Hebrew. But Franz Delich was a non-Jewish German, German Lutheran theologian, but he did love the Jews. But how did he translate the New Testament into Hebrew? He simply took the Greek text that was already there and translated it back into Hebrew. Here's the problem with Delich's Hebrew translation of the New Testament. His translation, he did several editions, starting in 1877. Dalitz's translation is considered the standard New Testament edition in Hebrew, and in its 10th edition, look what happens. It was revised by a young Arnold Ehrlich at Dalitz's insistence, and this edition was intended to be used for proselytization among the Jews. Well, Arnold, Arnold Ehrlich emphasized the Torah to be a document just made by humans, complete with scribal and copying errors, and not a perfect work dictated to Moses at Sinai. This is the Hebrew New Testament. So let's check these scholars. Here is Hebrews 8 9. And I want you to notice, again, Datelitz would have used the Greek. Right here is the Greek of this verse. Here's the transliteration. Here's the Hebrew. Here's the Hebrew transliteration. And here's the English in Hebrews 8 9. Not according to the covenant I made with their fathers in the day I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt because they continued not in my covenant and I regarded them not, says the Lord. That's what the Greek said. Well, I want to point this out. Then Hebrew, that word is bakalti. Many of you that know Hebrew know what I'm showing here. Well, let's take a look what happens. This is the correct translation from the Greek. I'll have you know. But he took the Greek and went backwards into Hebrew. Here is Hebrew, Hebrews 8, 9. Notice it begins with the word lo on top. Well, here is Jeremiah 31, 31 and 32, where it's taking the same verse and it says, lo, there, the word is baalti. In Jeremiah, it's the letter ayin, but in Hebrew, in Dalitz's, it's bakalti. So why in the Hebrew translation from the Greek is it bakalti, but in the Hebrew, it's Baalti. Here, a letter has been changed. A letter's been changed from the Hebrew. And we see the accurate translation from Gen uh, Jeremiah 31. 31 is Baalti. They changed one letter, and Baalti means I puked them out. I regarded them not. But here's what it actually says in Jeremiah 31. Not like the covenant I made with their fathers on the day I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. My covenant that they broke, though I was a husband, declares the Lord. This is replacement theology. Here, the Greek had it wrong, and he translated the Greek correctly, which was wrong. 
Here's the Geneva Bible. This is one of the first Bibles in English from 1560. And they say it is a scholarly edition of the New Testament in the Hebrew Scriptures. All right. How does it say it? And I regarded them not. That's not a correct translation. It's not even a scholarly translation like they say. The New American Standard Bible is considered by some for this century as the most literally translated of major 20th century English Bible translations. Here it is, the New American Standard. But guess what? There it says, and I did not care for them. And it's supposed to be even though I was their husband. If he would have just gone to the Hebrew and we put it there, it would have been correctly. But he had a faulty text in the Greek that he was using. So the Greek was wrong, which tells us the Greek was not the original. It was originally in Hebrew. But because of replacement theology, they wrote it wrong. The modern Hebrew is also wrong because he has Bacalti. In Acts 3.18, it says, concerning Yeshua, who the heavens have to receive until the time of the restitution of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of all the prophets since the world began. So what we're doing in this Bible, we're restoring the language. We're restoring the cultural understanding. We're restoring the historical understanding. How many of you are familiar when the rooster crowed three times when Peter denied Christ? It never happened. It never happened. The temple is an outside service is where they're held. Who wants to smell a stinking chicken coop? Slaughterhouse. There never were chickens because they weren't acceptable as a sacrifice either. Just like the word general or captain, there was a priest named the rooster. And every morning he would cry out three times to begin the morning service. So we're restoring the language. We're restoring the cultural understanding. We're restoring the historical understanding. And if, if you want to get this Bible, it is an online Bible only. But it has the Hebrew. It's a New Testament in Hebrew with the Hebrew transliteration and the corrected English. Uh, every chapter has a voice recording as well. And now you can be a part of fulfilling this prophecy of the restitution of all things. And I believe I, this now is going to be the number one most scholarly, literally translated Bible for the 21st century. We're going to restore the language, keep the spirit, and this is where you can get it. And it's online only. With that said, Curtis, come on up. And I want all of you that brought your shofars to blow them at the last trump, at the 100th blast. Now, there are three sounds, the tekiah, the shevarim, the teruah, then the 100th blast is known as the tekiah hagadol, which means the really big one. Tekiah means to everyone gather. The shevarim of three blasts means to break camp. And then the ninth, or the nine sounds, the teruah is wake up and gather for war. Are you ready? All right. Takia. Shavarim. Teruah. Takia. Takia, Shavarim, Tarua, Takia, Takia, Shavarim, Tarua. Takia. Takia. Shavarim. 
Takia. Takia. Shavarim. Takia. Takia. Shavarim. Takia. Takia. Tarua. Takia. Takia. Tarua. Takia. Takia. Tarua. Are you ready? Everybody stand up. Now comes the great in gathering. The Takia Hagado. And the worship team can come up. The worship team, come on up. Everyone have your shofars ready? Get ready. Here we go. Takia Gadola. <laughs> We're going, to, uh, we're going to close with a priestly blessing. And then we're going to have some more worship and you can blow your shofars and have fun. But we want to close with the priestly blessing first. And one other thing I want to say. Hope that's not happening. <laughs> the year is 5785. 85, the number 85 in Hebrew is the letter pay and the letter hey, which forms the word pay, which is mouth and breath coming out of the mouth. And if you remember, God breathed the world into creation. It says he breathed out the stars. This year is going to be the year of the Lord speaking his word to those who have ears to hear, the prophetic word is coming this year. With that said, I'm going to close with a priestly blessing. I'm going to say it in Hebrew and then in English. But I want to say one thing. Most people don't know the priestly blessing, the impact it has because they don't know Hebrew. So I just want to real quickly tell you, everyone stands as you are whenever the priestly blessing is said. And many of you are familiar with it, where it begins with the Lord bless you and keep you. I'm just going to talk about that first line, even though there are three lines. The word bless is barak, and it actually means to kneel. David said, let us bless the Lord. That means he knelt. It's translated as to kneel. And a bracha is a blessing where you're on bended knee and you're bringing a gift. Like the Magi when baby Jesus was born. While everyone is standing here, this begins with the Lord bless you. The creator of the universe wants to come on bended knee like a parent to look at a child and look you right in the eye. And he wants to bring you a gift. Amen. And then it says, and keep you. In Hebrew, the word keep is shamar, and it means to hedge about, to protect like with thorns. The ancient shepherd would put like a corral of thorns around the sheep to protect them all night, and he stayed at the door. So what this is saying, 
The Lord wants to come to you, and it's the word you in Hebrew is singular. It's not you as a group. It's you as an individual while you're standing there. The creator of the universe wants to come down on bended knee like he did on the cross. Okay? And he wants to look you in the eye, and he wants to protect you from every predator in your life. And this is why every Jewish household, every Friday night, says this prayer over their family and over their kids. But this is what God told Moses to tell Aaron to say. Ivarekaka Adonai ve'ish mareka, ya'er Adonai panav ilecha v'chuneka. Yisa Adonai panav ilecha v'yasem l'cha shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord lift his face upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And that most wonderful name, Eye, Asher, Eye, Amen. Give the Lord a clap offering and a shout of the shofar.